It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Oh, at last, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw his light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, where we focus on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're picking up today as we're going through uh, this book of Genesis. We're picking up today at this 26th chapter. Oh, man, we're past the halfway point now. We're getting some steam behind us. <laughs> and so as you grab your Bibles, we'll open up in a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to dive right in. Uh, and before we do, hey, thank you all you new subscribers and you folks that are watching the videos. We really appreciate it. We pray that they're a blessing for you. And if they are, uh, we'd hope that you would uh, subscribe and share and comment and ask questions and all that uh, as you have them. And so uh, thank you so much. You you, you, you didn't have to, to join us, but you have, and we truly appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you joining us in our efforts to get the word of God out. So let's open up. Lord, we thank you so much for another opportunity to teach and go through your word. We pray, God, that each and every hearer will receive something that will encourage them and to remind them of your greatness and your power. As always, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we come now to chapter 26, and this chapter is really the only chapter in the book that focuses on Abraham's son, Isaac. It's his only full and and dedicated uh, chapter. Abraham was the central figure in the last uh, 12 chapters or so. And and for the rest of the book, we're going to mostly focus on Jacob and his life and his children. But Isaac only gets this one chapter that's really, truly about him. And it's very interesting. Now, that, that doesn't mean that his life is any less significant than theirs, though. Uh, his life is just as important to our story. Uh, there, there's, there's just had, you know, uh, more events and, and things that were recorded and Isaac has fewer events to record. Uh, but his life is just as important. And that should be a note to you. You know, maybe you had parents who had eventful lives or significant accomplishments or brothers and sisters or, or whoever. And maybe you feel like you're in the shadow of them or something like that, you know. Uh, but you are not, my friend. Let me tell you that, at least not in God's sight. Uh, there, there may uh, not be a, a lot here about Isaac, uh, but Abraham's life would be a lot less accomplished if there were no Isaac. Jacob wouldn't even exist if there was no Isaac. So you see, Isaac is quiet here, but his life is all important in the plan of God. It's tempting to think that if you haven't done something that the world would call noteworthy or significant, that you don't matter. Well, let me tell you something, friend, you do matter. <laughs> you do matter. And how do I know you matter? Because you're here. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. But you serve a definite and an important purpose in the plan of God. Amen. You can tell him, thank you, Lord. Men may not recognize your significance, but God recognizes it. And he made only one of you. <laughs> and there'll always only be one of you. Why? because you matter to him. You are important to him. Now let's read on. Verse uh, verse one here. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Now, uh, just because there's not a lot uh, in the book about Isaac, doesn't mean that there's not things that he did that were significant. And by the way, that he did, he also did some things that were wrong. And we're going to see those here. We'll see here. He's going to, to down to old Abimelech. We just read. Uh, and he, and does that sound familiar? Well, it should, because his father did the same thing. 
Now, this is probably a different person. Abimelech is, is, is probably like a title, like uh, Pharaoh or Herod. Different people hold that name. You see, now verse 2, And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Now, Egypt often represents the world, and nothing good comes from going to Egypt. Even later, when Joseph gets the family uh, uh, down to Egypt to save them from the famine, the great famine in the land, they have to live in a separate part of the land, you see, uh, because they can't mix. They can't mix with the Egyptians who represent represent the world. So I don't care how bad trouble gets, friends, never go back to the worldly way, uh, uh, the worldly ways of handling things. That's the message we get here. First John 2 and 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world can't help you. Don't do things worldly. That's that's what that's the picture we get here when, when God says that yes, there's trouble, but don't go to Egypt. Don't go and, and do the things that the world would do. You see, don't do things in a worldly way. Do things in a spiritual way, trusting in God. Now, verse three. So, join in this land, and I will be with thee. Now he's down in Gerar. God says, "Stay, get, stay there in Gerar, uh, and he'll be blessed." For unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham, thy father. See. Uh, he he doesn't have a whole 12 chapters like Abraham had written about his life. He doesn't have all the attention that Jacob is going to have, but it's the same blessing. <laughs> it's the same blessing from the same God. He may not have ha have all of the uh, uh, pomp and the circumstance and the and the celebration and the attention and all of that, but he's got the same blessing <laughs> because he's got the same God blessing him. Please remember that. Please remember that when you, you, you who may not think your life is significant, it is. God thinks it is. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Now, verse four, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto the, thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, just like Abraham, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt uh, in Gerar. He stayed there. Good job, Isaac. Now, <laughs> and the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, she is my sister. Uh-oh. For he feared to say she is my wife. Lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah because she was fair to look on. Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, does this sound familiar? <laughs> it should. This is the same lie his father told. A few times. We, we've already been down that, that road when we studied earlier in Genesis. Same road of lies where he's not trusting God. Uh, you would think he would have learned from his dad how this doesn't work, how trusting God works better. <laughs> uh, but but it, obviously he has not. Now, either one of two things has happened. Either Abraham didn't tell his son about how he did this, which... Uh, would uh, would would basically mean maybe uh, maybe Abraham was shamed of his actions and didn't want his son to know what he did, and if that's the case, well he protected himself, but he cost his son. You see, parents, your mistakes are lessons for your kids, and it's better that they know you failed and learn from it than to think you're perfect but then fall into the hands of the same enemy. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's either Abraham was shamed to tell his son, or perhaps Abraham did tell his son, but his son Isaac here just didn't listen to him. And if that's the case, well, then Abraham would have done the right thing. But sometimes your children have to just learn on their own. You don't want them to repeat your mistakes, but for that child who won't listen, he'll just have to learn on his own. <laughs> and as they say, you'll either learn by listening or you'll learn by experience, but you're going to learn. Or as my mama would say, a hard head sometimes make a soft well backside. Let's go with that. <laughs> Back Now, verse eight. Uh, uh, verse eight. Oh, and it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw, and behold, Isaac sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Sporting, that means he's caressing her. Boy, they're getting romantic over there. 
and old Abimelech looks out the window, and and and, and he gets himself a shock. Either Isaac and his sister are super close and weird and nasty, <laughs> or he's been lied to. And well, he's been he's been lied to, friends. And nobody likes to be lied to. I mean, <laughs> there's something about just recognizing that you've been lied to, like somebody's trying to insult your intelligence, thinking you won't figure it out. That is just an annoying thing for me, at least I know. Verse 9, And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold of a surety, she's your wife. And how saidest thou, she's my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her? And Abimelech said, What is this that thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lain with your wife, and you should have brought guiltiness upon us. You see, the lie protected Isaac, but it put the people at risk. <laughs> That's why many times a lie, friends, a lie is just selfish. It, it, it'll cover you, but it'll, 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 it'll mislead everybody else and cause them to be at risk of going down the wrong road or believing the wrong thing. Also, take note here that when Abraham told his lie, it was only partially a lie. It was a half lie. Now, we said when we taught this that a half lie is a full lie, <laughs> but... <laughs> But it, it, the Abraham's lie was partially true because Sarah actually was his half-sister. But Isaac here is telling a full lie with no conscience. You see, the sin has only gotten worse. Uh, his, he, he has no conscience about it. There's no, no even, uh, not even a part of it's true. That's why we ought to not give in to sin, because you see, it only gets worse as you go further in the sin. And little by little, you put up with more and more of the sin till uh, uh, you get to the point where you're telling half lies. Then your conscience is so seared that you're telling full lies with no problem. You might want to just stay away from sin, friends. <laughs> stay away from things that the word of God says are wrong and stay on that path of righteousness. Now, verse 11, and Abimelech charged all his people saying, he that toucheth this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Now, I'm sure that decree by the king made Isaac feel better, made him feel safer. But it's just ironic that he trusts the king's word over God. <laughs> God said, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to bless you. And that wasn't good enough. He still went and lied. But when the king said, uh, 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 don't, nobody touch his wife or, or I'm going to get you, well, he believed that, you see. And it's like that with us. <laughs> God says, I'm going to protect you. He said, I'm going to keep you. He said, a thousand shall fall at your right hand and 10,000 on the other side, but it won't come nigh thee. And yet we are still worried. We still, uh, uh, we're not accepting it. We're still uh, 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 running and fretting. Until somebody on the news or somebody in some political position gets on the, the, the television and says all is well. Well, I knew all was well when God said it was well. <laughs> Trust God, friends. Trust God. And so verse 12 says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forth and grew until he became very great. You see? There's not, a, again, back to my earlier point, there may not be a lot written about Isaac. Uh, he's a little quieter, but God has blessed him too. No need to compare to anybody else. God has given him what's for him. Now forget about comparisons. Forget about looking at what other people have, what gifts and talents they have. God has given you what's for you, and he's going to use what he's given you to bless you in your life. All right, we'll cut off there and pick up again next time. Until then, God bless you.